With the day one raid behind us, it's time to dive into some of the sandbox changes that dropped at the start of the season. And one exotic that caught my attention was Foe Tracer, as it received a complete overhaul from how it functioned in the past. This helmet is now top tier in endgame content due to its neutral game benefits, and is also insanely good for DPS on bosses, enabling one of the most versatile, unkillable hunter builds I've used to date. I'm above, and if you enjoyed today's video, a like and subscription would be greatly appreciated. Now, let's get into it. At the start of Season of the Witch, Foe Tracer had its previous exotic traits removed and replaced with the ability to gain substantial damage bonuses and ability uptime. This exotic states that damaging a powerful combatant with an ability grants you a temporary weapon bonus for weapons matching your subclass type, and defeating that target with a weapon matching your subclass creates an elemental pickup. And this damage boost is substantial. As you can see here, Apex Predator hits for a base damage number of 34,326. And when we throw our knives at the boss to proc Foe Tracer's exotic perk, the helmet instantly provides us with a solar weapon boost times four, which brings our damage number to 42,907, a 25% damage bonus for simply throwing our knives at the boss. And what's crazy about this is that it doesn't require require surge mods to do this. It happens no matter what. So in a situation where you're running Apex Predator for boss damage, you can spec into kinetic surges instead, which will empower weapons like Izanagi's Burden that are used in damage rotations involving bait and switch rockets. This means at base, we can empower our kinetic damage by 22% and have a 25% damage bonus from Foe Tracer on our rockets, making our total damage numbers significantly higher. And it gets even better. If we then add Radiant to the mix, we'll gain an additional 25% damage bonus when damaging an enemy with a solar ability, so when we throw our knives, which we'll already be doing to proc Foe Tracer's exotic perk, we'll get a 25% damage boost from the helmet and a 25% damage boost from Radiant, bringing our rocket damage from 42,907 all the way up to 53,634. And we can then stack one of this season's most popular artifact mods on top of that. Monochromatic Maestro states that dealing elemental ability damage will increase weapon damage matching our subclass type by an additional 10%. And when we pair this with Foe Tracer, we'll now see a solar weapon boost times five on the left side of our screen. This takes our rocket damage from 53,634 up to an astounding 58,997, and all we had to do was use our melee ability, which simultaneously procced Foe Tracer, Radiant, and Monochromatic Maestro at the same time. Though the perk description states that this lasts just 5 seconds, any ability that lingers on a target, such as Scorch for example, will continuously reproc this perk while the target is burning, and lingers for 5 full seconds after the Scorch has expired. You'll notice that this boost lasts for roughly 12 seconds on this Lost Sector boss, which is more than enough to incorporate it into a real-world damage phase, especially when you consider that it can be reprocked at any time. Which not only makes this incredibly easy to use, it can all be achieved as a solo player. And these numbers don't even take into account damage perks like Bait and Switch, or debuffs like Tractor Cannon that will almost always be used in team settings. So, now that I've got your your attention, let's make a build that's not only insane for DPS, but offers top tier survivability and general utility in endgame content. First up, we have Blade Barrage, and this one's pretty self-explanatory, as it's one of the highest DPS supers in the game, and becomes even stronger when paired with exotics like Star Eater Scales. Now what's cool about this, is that Blade Barrage casts incredibly quickly. This means that in raid settings, we can use Star Eaters when casting our super, then hot swap to Foe Tracer for increased weapon damage and get the best of both worlds for DPS. On Solar, this benefits weapons like Galahorn, Apex Predator, Lament, Sleeper Simulant, Merciless, and Cartesian Coordinate, which are some of the best DPS weapons in the game. 
as for our abilities, first up, we have Gambler's Dodge, which will refund our melee when we dodge near an enemy. This helps keep Radiant proc consistently and gives us an extra set of knives to proc Foe Tracer on priority targets whenever we need it. For our melee, I went with Knife Trick, as this fan of knives does a ton of damage, which can easily ignite targets and has an incredibly forgiving hitbox. And last but not least, I went with the Healing Grenade, which takes our damage build and helps make us unkillable. Restoration is incredibly powerful in endgame content, and this build ensures that we have it active at nearly all times. As for the aspects, I went with On Your Mark, which grants you and nearby allies both increased weapon handling and reload speed, making this build feel incredibly snappy. Not to mention the fact that it also gives us three fragment slots, which will allow us to do some pretty insane build crafting later on. Our second aspect is Knock Em Down, which grants Blade Barrage additional projectiles for increased damage and refunds our melee ability while Radiant. Speaking of Radiant, this leads us nicely into our fragments because we're gonna be Radiant nearly all the time. First up, we have Ember of Torches, which states that powered melee attacks make both you and nearby allies Radiant. This is key to our neutral game build, as this 25% damage buff really steps up our ad clear while also giving us intrinsic anti-barrier. Next up, we have Ember of Solace, which states that Radiant and Restoration effects have increased duration. This takes the base Resto timer of 4 seconds and the base Radiant timer of 8 seconds and extends them by 50%, bringing them up to 6 seconds and 12 seconds respectively. This gives us more leeway when we're looking for an add to kill to extend these buffs with our next fragment, Ember of Empyrean, which states that Solar Weapon and Ability Final Blows will extend the duration of Radiant and Restoration effects. So when we throw a healing nade at the ground, then toss our knives to proc Radiant, we can use our solar weapons to extend these buffs to a staggering 12 seconds and infinitely refresh these on kill, similar to Devour. This means we have them active at all times, which makes this build incredible in underleveled content. And it's just a bonus that we get to take advantage of top tier primaries like Sunshot when using this build, which is absolutely nutty after the hand cannon buffs this season. Next, we have Ember of Singeing, which increases our class ability regen when scorching targets. And since our knives apply enough scorch to ignite a target, we'll be doing this constantly. And you can even run weapons with Incandescent to speed up your regen if you want to take this even further. And last but not least, we have Ember of Searing, which states that defeating scorched targets grants melee energy and produces a fire sprite on kill. This acts as a safeguard should we ever lose our charged melee and ensures that we're constantly cycling our abilities. Diving into our armor mods, on the helmet I went with Harmonic Siphon to generate orbs of power on solar weapon kills. This allows weapons like Sunshot to generate a ridiculous number of orbs, all while supplying the massive super gains that exotic primaries are known for. I also went with Heavy Ammo Finder and Scout for consistent heavy drops, whether we're solo or in a fire team. You could go with something like Hands On for additional super energy if you'd like, but it's really not necessary with how fast we'll be getting our super in anyways. On the gauntlets, I went with a harmonic loader and paired this with impact induction and focusing strike, which reduces our grenade and class ability cooldowns when causing damage with our melee attack. This keeps our abilities cycling quickly, which is great for refreshing our buffs should they ever expire. On the chest, you'll want to tailor your resist mods to the activity that you're running, and on the boots, I went with a solar scavenger and two solar surges for solo play. Though this won't help us against marked foe tracer targets, it will provide a 17% damage bonus against all enemies when we pick up an orb of power. For DPS builds, you'll want to swap these for kinetic surges to further optimize your bait and switch damage rotations, as I mentioned earlier in the video. And last but not least, on the class item, I went with Bomber, which reduces grenade cooldowns when using your class ability, powerful attraction to collect all nearby orbs of power when dodging, and time dilation, which increases the weapon surge timers for even greater uptime. This unkillable foe Tracer build has quickly become my favorite build this season, and took what was already an incredibly strong neutral game and made it even better. Foe Tracer is fantastic for nuking down high profile enemies in solo play and is top tier for DPS in team activities as well. This is easily one of the most well rounded builds I've ever put together on the channel, and I hope you guys enjoy it as much as I do. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you 
did, a like and subscription would be greatly appreciated. You can also catch me live on Twitch over at twitch.tv slash above, where we have a great time talking Destiny all week long, so feel free to swing on by sometime. That's it from me. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time.